Hi, everyone. My name is Landon Isaacson, and I will be discussing four-year series and applications. Uh, let's start with a little background. A four-year series are pretty much just an expansion of a periodic function into a sum of sines and cosines. They make functions a whole lot easier to analyze since trigonometric functions are very well understood. They were first used by Joseph Fourier, hence the name, and he's the guy on the previous slide, uh, to find solutions to the heat equation. But nowadays they're used in signal processing, partial differential equations, uh, forensics, and a ton of other fields. So you can see they're tremendously versatile. Uh, this all might seem a little bit abstract, perhaps. So let's lay the foundation with a motivating example. So say we have this function f of t with period uh, 2 pi and frequency 1 over 2 pi. Um, as shown in the graph, it's a square wave. So the question we have is, how can we write f of t as a sum of uh, trigonometric functions? And I chose a square wave because it has applications in electronics, communications, audio and music, um, and many different areas. So this is a real problem that engineers or mathematicians uh, would need to solve, although in this case, it's a little bit trivial. All right, um, before I go any further, I do need to take a brief interlude um, and define the following uh, integrals. Um, now, I'm not going to show the steps of how we arrived um, at this uh, these answers, but um, I think they're all fairly doable. Um, if you don't believe me, you could probably find the answers to many of these at the back of a calculus textbook. Um, but once you've uh, convinced yourself that these are true, um, let's re return back to the problem um, and continue solving. So as I said before, uh, we are tasked with writing this uh, square wave in terms of trig functions. So let's begin by just um, solving for our a sub zero coefficient. Now, uh, we can take the integral from zero to two pi of both sides, and by applying those properties that I just uh, mentioned earlier, uh, we arrive at the following, and by solving for a sub zero, we get um, one over two pi, times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of f of t dt, which is in fact just um, the average value, which uh, does make sense given that this first term kind of uh, shifts our entire function up or down. Um, and so um, it would make sense to be the average value. All right, uh, solving for the cosine terms, um, we first multiply uh, both sides by cosine, um, and then take the integral, apply those properties, many of the terms go to zero, and we're left with this, and then by solving for a sub n, um, we get the following. Very similar for the sine terms, just now we multiply by sine on either side, take the integral, apply those properties, um, and we get the following for our b sub n. So these are our results. Um, we have a sub zero equal to three halves, in this case, um, our a sub n a sub n is actually uh, equal to zero for all n, and our b sub n is equal to zero if n is even and equal to six um, over n pi if n is odd. Uh, with these results, we can come back to our original function um, and write out the first uh, several terms to begin approximating the square wave. Um, and even with just only a, several terms, we can see that it, it does start to do a pretty good job approximating the general shape um, and you can imagine, or you're probably wondering, uh, what happens if we add 10 or 100 or perhaps even an infinite amount? Um, does our Fourier series eventually converge to our original function? Well, let's find out. So this brings us to the notion of convergence. Uh, the convergence of a periodic function's Fourier series to a specific function is studied within a field called classical harmonic analysis. Convergence isn't necessarily given in the general uh, case, and uh, certain criteria must be met for it to occur. Uh, there's many different types of convergence, but uh, for the purpose of this presentation, we will focus on a type 
of convergence called uh, piecewise convergence or pointwise, sorry. Um, and this essentially uh, works by uh, looking at, sorry, we're looking at individual points and how they converge towards uh, the original function. All right, so let's start with a theorem. Um, and in essence, uh, this states that for a continuously differentiable function f of x defined on the interval negative l to l, the partial sums of its Fourier series um, s sub n of x converges pointwise to f of x. We also introduce uh, this concept of the ingested function, which is equal uh, to f of x at continuous points and at points of discontinuity. It's equal to the average of the values of f of x on either side of the discontinuity. Uh, before I dive into this proof, I should note that it's a bit long, um, quite computationally intensive, and in the interest of time, um, I hope we can really just extract the big ideas uh, to gain a more rigorous understanding of convergence. All right, so we begin by expressing the partial sum of the Fourier series S sub n of x in terms of its coefficients, um, the a sub 0, a sub n, and b sub n, uh, similar to what we did previously. And this motivates the definition um, of the function uh, d sub n of z, which we can call the Dirichlet, Dirichlet? <laughs> not sure how to pronounce that, kernel. Uh, this Dirichlet kernel plays an important role in proving convergence uh, because it helps uh, sort of bound the partial sums and, and establish these properties of convergence. Uh, by, by manipulating these series, we can derive a form that resembles a geometric series um, and then find the sum. We can then substitute this uh, into the cosine series um, and then simplify its form. Um, so using what we've just derived, we can write the Fourier series um, to its Dirichlet kernel form. Um, and for the last two integrals, p of z equals f of z plus x times the Dirichlet kernel. Um, which is a periodic function of x with period 2L. Um, and we can see that it then simplifies greatly. Um, and so now it's really just a study of the Dirichlet kernel um, instead of that uh, like partial series. Okay, so um, note this integral equals one for all n. Um, since the integral of all cosine terms vanish uh, by multiplying both sides of, of the expression by f of x, um, it yields uh, the following for all n. Um, all right, and then uh, we can consider the difference between the adjusted function and the partial sum of the Fourier series and substitute the rational function form of the Dirichlet kernel, um, which yields the following. Then through the riemann lebes lebesgue sorry, Lebesgue form a lemma, we can see that the Fourier coefficients of the function go to zero as n goes to infinity. Um, now returning to the expression for partial sum and the adjusted function, um, since the adjusted function minus f of x plus c is piecewise is a piecewise continuously uh, differentiable function, uh, the second integral goes to zero. Um, in the limit, um, and in the first integral, the function um, is piecewise continuously differentiable um, everywhere except maybe at z equals zero. Um, however, uh, using Le Hopital's rule, which you may recall from calculus, um, we can see that the first integral um, actually also goes to zero. Um, and so we have completed our proof. Um, I hope that the main ideas stood out. It's definitely a lot to take in on the first read through. Uh, there's one more, one last thing I would like to discuss, um, and you may have in fact noticed it uh, from earlier. Um, and it's that it's it's how around the uh, jump discontinuities, there's these peaks and troughs um, that seem to be appearing. Um, and so what exactly is going on here? Well, this is called Gibbs phenomenon, and it describes the oscillatory behavior of um, Fourier series of piecewise continuously differentiable periodic functions around a jump discontinuity. Um, it produces large peaks around the jump, which overshoot and undershoot the function values. 
Um, and as more sinusoids are used, this approximation error approaches a limit of about 9%. I've graphed uh, several more square waves, um, so you can see um, how this appears at different um, harmonics, like 5, 25, and 125. Um, even though every partial sum of the Fourier series overshoots around each discontinuity um, that it's approximating, the limit of summing an infinite number of sinusoidal waves um, does not. So the overshoot peaks move closer and closer to the discontinuity as more um, terms are summed. So convergence um, is actually still possible. Um, when I first heard this, I thought that there that like this might be a contradiction, but um, there's in fact no contradiction between uh, the overshoot error um, converging to like a non-zero height, even though the infinite sum has no overshoot, um, because uh, the overshoot peaks move towards the discontinuity. Um, so Gibbs phenomenon exhibits pointwise convergence, but not uniform convergence. All right, that concludes my presentation on Fourier series. Uh, thank you for listening.